Good morning, everyone. On this Tuesday morning, mid September, we give mid October. <laughs> we give thanks to God for God's faithfulness to us. Um, something that and to the world. It's an important piece to add today, as we see a, another war breaking out. That God is faithful to the entire world. Okay, just a second. We gather this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. Well, today we are... Since I'm at home, we have our day by day. We magnify you by uh, excerpts from Martin Luther, and uh, today is how um, in the we're in the twentieth week of Pentecost, and so our text today is Second Corinthians six chapter chapter six, six verse ten. As poor yet making many rich, as many as having nothing, okay, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. Every individual Christian is a human being such as the Lord Christ himself was on earth. He accomplished great things and is able to govern the whole world in divine matters. He can help and benefit everyone, doing the greatest works of, on earth. For his sake, God gives the world all that it has and preserves it. If there is no Christians on earth, no city or country would enjoy peace. Everything on earth would perish in a single day. That grain still grows in the field that people recover from an illness, that they have their sustenance, peace, and protection. All this they owe to, to the Christians. Indeed, we are poor beggars, yet we make many rich. Although we have nothing, yet we possess everything. What kings, princes, lords, ordinary citizens, and peasants have is not theirs by reason of their golden hair, but because of Christ and his Christians. Christians have the gospel, baptism, and the sacrament, by means of which they convert people, snatch souls from the clutches of the devil, wrest them from hell and death, and bring them to heaven. With these, they also comfort, strengthen, and preserve poor consciences that are sanded, saddened and troubled by the devil and others. They are able to teach and instruct people in the walks of life and to help them live in the Christian and blessed way. All these are works that all kings and emperors in the world, all the mighty and the rich, all scholars and sages are unable to do and would not purchase with all of their wealth. For none of them can console and gladden a single conscience that is oppressed and aggravated by sin. It's from Luther's works 24, the sermons on John chapter 14 through 15. Hmm. And the title is Christians Save the World. It's true, Christ saves the world. We say that Christians save the world through Christ's word. However, history also shows how many times we have taken that in a way um, well, crusades for one. Um, some of our conversion tactics have not always been um, life-giving, let's say. Sometimes we do conflate our power with um, power of the gospel with power of the sword. In our Thursday morning Bible study, we're kind of getting into Saul and how he began as a man what that was anointed by God and a man who, who did fight battles 
for the Lord and for the sake of God's people. But then he took it a little too far and the blessings departed from him and many people suffered. I think that's a piece to remember in this, especially today um, with all that's happening in our world of, of humility and moderation in, in the, just how far this work of Christians goes in the world, in the left-hand kingdom, as far as um, being justified in all the battles we fight, all the stances we take. Um, do you notice when we put the line down like that, it's always on the side of the law. When we say we, we're going to champion this cause, it it's not about the gospel. Whenever we say we're going to champion a cause, it tends to be about a social issue, a political stance, um, how people are living, what they are deciding in their daily life. And yes, we, we are called to preach law and gospel. So law is part of that. And part of the world's need is... Um, our the work of our of the law our neighbor needs us we have that important part but there's the universal laws of just life and death and kindness and um, being poured out for one another but none of those can save people they might restrain evil they might um, guide somebody to into acts of care and love for one another. But that's actually not how we save the world as Christians. We forget that a lot. What we are called to do as Christians is, yes, to keep our feet on the ground and care for our neighbors. Um, but also then, these works, if you're looking at them, we have the gospel. Baptism, the Lord's Supper, where we can convert people and snatch souls from the clutches of the devil, wrest them from hell and the death and bring them to heaven. I think right now we would love to change some people's hearts in the world. And we are unable to do that. We can restrain sin. We can have the biggest weapon as a deterrent, but to actually change a heart takes a different kind of word. And that is one that other religions don't have, but we do. We have the one words of mercy and grace and truth of God's um, providence, God's God's plan for all creation, God's death and resurrection on the cross through Jesus Christ for us. So we are poor beggars when we look at the world's problems and want to fix them. Um, we might fix some small term and might cause other problems. doesn't mean that we shouldn't stop doing that. But we really have nothing to offer that others don't have in those ways, except for, I'd say, seeing each other people as somebody loved by Christ, somebody whose Christ's mercy um, is for as well. We have that unique perspective that the world needs. And so we are and tr truly called to share the gospel. Not you must do this, but I see that you're failing at this and God gives you grace and mercy and love. God is your strength and your comfort. Because how many times are we fighting battles because our consciences are not clear? How many times do we fight battles because we're not comfortable? that we don't feel strong, that we are saddened, that we are troubled by the devil and other people's temptations of us. How often does that create our, our discomfort, our pain, our suffering, our harming of others? And into those times, speaking the word of grace, that God sees you and knows you and is here to change your heart, that a God who we, we are forever given a promise to. So hearkening back to that, you are forgiven for not believing that God is bigger than this problem. You are forgiven for not waiting upon the Lord. You are forgiven for taking what is not yours. You are forgiven. And all these things, 
the emperors and the kings of the world don't have. They have other callings, but they will often, in the weariness and the brokenness of our world through the mysteries and the temptations out there, fall upon the, wolf, the sword rather than the word of God. So this is not something that you can purchase. This is not something that you can learn. This is something that you must be given. And once you are given, then you can learn how to use it. Once it's been given, then you can um, give it to others. And for you, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, you have been given this good word. And in our world that is broken, and we see just how broken it is, we should not despair because we do have a word of eternal life. We have a word of, of life for now. And that is what the world needs to hear right now. That Isaiah 25 from this last Sunday, that God has swallowed up death on the mountain of the Lord. And it's for all nations, all people. And the joyous banquet feast that God has and is preparing for us is truly a marvelous and wondrous thing for us and for all. Thanks be to God. Oh, a tough word today, but a word that we need to remember that while it might seem foolish, that God's word is more powerful and gives life even in the midst of the current events that we are living and others are living even more deeply than us but that God is faithful. So you have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. Lord, we think of um, huge rainstorms and the promise of the, the rainbow. And how that also shows us that in the rainstorms of our life, where we're being pummeled um, and beaten down by circumstances, by forces beyond our control, that your promise endures and will rise with the morning. We pray for the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness. Today, we especially lift up those in need of your care, your healing. We lift up the family of Bob as they mourn, um, Sue as she faces um, medical decisions. We pray for um, the Mayday family. We pray for uh, members in our congregation, in our families, in our community that are in need of healing, that are in need of your word that brings grace and hope comfort and strength. May that word be spoken in many homes, in many um, conversations in this coming these coming days, Lord. We pray for forgiveness. Forgive us and help us be quick to share that word with the world that needs it so dearly. For the gifts of relationship with others, we rejoice and we ask that you, you use us in our relationships for the sake of the gospel, that you have us in such a place of our faith where we can just give that, that good word in our relationships and create newness and hopefulness and possibility through your forgiveness. We pray for the community of faith in your church. Continue to, we give thanks for the potluck this last weekend and we give thanks for the, um, the fourth and fifth grade retreat we ask that you continue to be with us in these coming weeks as we um, move towards the Reformation and all saints. We ask that you um, are with us in all of the work of our council and also in our the new members that you have gathered into our community and those who um, still are without a church home or haven't been practicing their faith um, in Sunday worship. May you gather them into either our church or into others so they might have that communion as well. 
Merciful God, and might renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially pray for those who govern nations of the world. Lord, our hearts are breaking once again. It feels like we're numb to the Ukraine-Russia war or just resigned to its fact. But now with a new, um, newly ignited conflict in the Middle East, in Israel-Palestine, we once again are shocked by just how horrific war is, how evil it can be. The things that we as humans are capable of doing to one another um, remains such a shock, something that we wish that we could we could change. So we into that pray for your word to come and create new hearts to to change strategies, to create peace, to give options or I don't know something other than terror and violence. In the devastation that this is, we pray for those who are perpetrators of it. We pray for those who react to it. We pray for those who are um, victims of it. And in our weariness of yet and again, what's the point? How much longer, Lord? We ask that your word of new life, your word of grace comes for people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare. Lord, we ask that the arms of our church that are can reach into those areas can bring hope and support, basic needs to be met. Um, the reminder that they're not forgotten. We pray for those in need just in our own communities. May you provide also for those who are ravaged by their strife the other kinds of warfare that we as people create, propagate. The heaviness of it all, Lord, we pray for the work of peace and international harmony that seem like fables and myths sometimes, that feel impossible. May you find us a way forward to peace and then help us to work to it. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, we thank you. And for the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, as we've kind of been dwelling today in this hard word, we ask that you remind us that we have a word that the world needs, Lord. So may we be a light to the nations. May we be hope for those who need it. May we be a place of refuge and peace in your word um, that we give freely and truly not just at Creator, but throughout the world. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and keep us now and always. Amen.